back in 2008, I attended a festival and I participated in a ritual that used platonic touch. And I was really struck by the profound effect that it had on the people who were coming to see us. So in 2013, a friend of mine and I started playing around with the ritual a little bit and people were really enthusiastic about what we were doing. So we turned it into a business called Karuna Sessions. And so for the past five years, I've been studying touch and its role in our lives and, you know, kind of coming to realize that it's something that is vitally important to us, but at the same time, there's very little of it. Uh, the other reason was that in 2017, I got out of a five year long relationship and I knew from what I was studying that if I wasn't uh, in a romantic relationship, I wasn't going to get my touch needs met and I have other priorities in my life right now. I wasn't super interested in pursuing a romantic relationship and so I knew it was going to be a problem and so I decided to write the book. So I spend a lot of time in the book talking about the different cultural factors that are making us isolated. And, you know, we could, I'm sure you know about them. We can go on about that for days. But one of the things that they found is that touch is one of the fastest ways to convey an emotion. A one second touch on the arm and the person who's being touched can tell what the intention of the giver is. And all of us are going through um, experiences where we're sad or we feel lonely and we need comforting. And, you know, there's very few things that make people feel better than having somebody like wrap them up in a big hug and just saying, I'm here with you. I see you. I see that you're suffering. Well, you know, for those of us who are single, I mean, there are many people who have really strong social circles that they consider their family and where, you know, we support each other and take care of each other, but we don't really have social scripts for how to touch our friends. Um, so this allows us to build on our existing relationships already and just putting another component of that support and interdependency in, in a way that feels really good. Sure, so this whole second half of the book is a start to finish how-to guide. There's an email that you can send to people to approach them about this. There's a social contract that you know creates a good structure. It tells you how to set up your room, where you should do it, what participants need to bring. It takes you through a series of exercises of negotiating boundaries. And then it you share touch in a way that allows you to get progressively closer, like the exercises are um, structured to get you physically closer. Um, and the benefit of it is that, you know, because we only think of touch as something sexual, um, because it's done in a group setting, it becomes something where touch is more social. And so, you know, it becomes a way to play and have fun and get closer to your friends. That is a great question. And yes, it's very true that we have too much unwanted touch. We've had it for years and we're just now starting to talk about it. But what the big problem is, is that we're throwing out all touch. We're making all touch suspect. And we're also not talking about touch that people do want. Um, and I firmly believe that if people start learning about how to ask for the touch that they want and getting the touch that they want, it's going to make it a lot easier for people to go, no, that was bad, that was unwanted, because they know what touch that they do want actually feels like. Okay, well, there are three of them. The first is on a personal level that people are going to feel better. Um, you know, when I do this with people, just a couple minutes of touch and they're laughing and smiling and talking about how great it feels and how they want to do it again. And, you know, most of us need to feel better. Most of us spend too much time on our devices. We spend too much time in our heads and not in our bodies. And, you know, it's just good for us. Uh, the second thing is on a cultural level, 
we have to be having more conversations about this. I mean, we're, the rules are shifting around touch so much and it's like, we need to talk about who, when, and why we touch other people. And on a more philosophical level, I think that nurturing human touch is something that changes our story about what we tell about other human beings. You know, it's like we're suspicious of people, we're suspicious of strangers, we think that people are out to get us and that they need so, or that they want something from us and when somebody is able to be kind and tender and sweet to you and take care of you it lets you tell a different story about humans um we as a species started out with a lot of touch you know we had to keep our tribe members close in order to survive and you know without touch babies won't thrive so it's something that's integral to our biology and something that i think we need a lot more of in our lives great